Hello, everyone. Welcome to this new live session, the 1st of September. We're going to get started in just two minutes. What is Customity? Well, most of you installed the app quite recently and are either getting started with your store from scratch or beginning the process of selling personalizable products on an existing store. For both cases, we have the perfect tools to get started. So Customity is an app that provides your store with live previews of products, along with options that your customers can interact with changing the live previews with every interaction. So in this example, for example, of a white ceramic mug, Customity will load the preview and give you choices. And you as a customer can interact with those choices, those options. And each time you make an interaction, the preview will update live for you. And this will give you a realistic example of how your customization will look on the final product. So from text typing to um, clip art selection, for example, or even image upload, Customity will change this live preview and give you a realistic example. And not only that, you will always be seeing a preview, but at the same time, once you check out and you purchase this product that is using Customity, the system will take all this information that you customize it and create the ready to print file. So think about how you were doing this in the past. Let me put a name on this example, and you see both ends, both sides of the mark being changed. Imagine how you did this on the past. You had to create a listing on your store, in any platform that will have a lot of options, a lot of images, and your customer will need to check each image. You will need to take notes of the different codes or options for the color, for the hairstyle. So imagine trying to, um, to set up any sort of character with many choices. They will have to input that information on a note area in your order and send that over. And with that information, you will need to create a proof, send over for approval, and begin a back and forth conversation until the final design is ready. Just think about how long that will take. And then you need to create the print file and go and fulfill. Now, Customity has come to save a lot of that time by giving you the power to set up the designs and the products and give them the customers the chance for them to do the customizations on their own, typing whatever they want, picking whatever character they want, and being able to preview that. And at the end, also giving the merchant the, the ready to print file. So all you have to do is send for fulfillment. So this preview is done by loading a template on the page as well as the options you see here, which is called the option set. So these two elements, the template and the option set, are created in Customity. So you can think about it that basically, if you follow the steps of creating a template from scratch, you'll be able to create the options automatically. That's part of the system. And you will be able to connect those two elements to any of your existing products in any store you have right now. So it's as simple as that. Imagine you have an existing store. And so your products right now published in your store are eligible for being customized. So like I said, all you have to do is create a template, link that template to the product. It will have the options, of course, and your product will become a customizable product live in your store using custom. Now, what if you're starting from scratch? And that's why we developed Customity 2.0. So let me tell you more about this. This is our latest update for Etsy and Shopify stores. And this allows you to create and publish personalized products easier, faster, and better than before. So like I said, those starting your stores from scratch will have more interest in this section because now you can choose a product directly from a print on demand supplier, add a design to it, and get it created and published in your store 
all from the Customity app. Now, also with the print-on-demand services that have an API connection, all the fulfillment processes will be automated. This means that once you receive a purchase, all the order details and the ready-to-print file will be sent to the corresponding POD provider automatically for fulfillment and shipping. So aside from all the time saving on the coming back and forth of the proof of your design and your choices, and the time saving for the creation of the print file, Customily is offering you the chance to save time on the manual sending and processing of, um, <clears throat> of your customized orders. So we can see that using Customity 2.0 gives you a lot of advantages when you're starting to create your first products in your new store. Now, also another interesting feature is that you have free access to Customity's design libraries. So this means that you can find ready to use designs. You can grab that clip art and create your own designs and this is all within Customity. So now you don't even have to begin with a specific design. You can start off with our clip art, our exclusive collection of clip art, like the one you can see on the girl's t-shirt. So let's say we can take four different roads when using Customity 2.0. You can work with a print-on-demand provider who has its own product catalog and add a design from the Customities library to it. This is the fastest path and the one that allows you to have published products ready to sell in minutes. You can work with a print-on-demand provider but choose to add your own designs to their products. In this case, you will have to populate your design library before being able to publish products in your store. On the other hand, if you have your own products and you're not interested in working with a print-on-demand provider, you can still use Customity, imagine you're on your own workshop, for example, your own factory, and you have your specific settings, you can still use Customity 2.0 because you can create your own mockups, you populate your product base library, and then you choose to add a design from the Customity library to them and create those products really fast. Or you can, of course, add your own designs, your own artworks to your own product mockups. Now, this is the path that will involve a bit more of time. But once you have all your product mockups and all your designs set up, you just have to do a mix and match game to create the specific products you want to publish. OK, so now that we have the different alternatives clear, we're going to create some products together. In this example, I showed you this white 15 ounce ceramic mug. This is a customization link on our Etsy store. So specifically we created, we use Customity 2.0 to create this product in our Etsy demo store. And you will see the full listing in Etsy. And once you purchase, you get an email from Customity with this particular link that will allow you to do the customization without any pressure, without any rush, and submit to finish the process of purchasing. Now, this is very specific of Etsy, but you still have the 2.0 tools, which is a great advantage when creating new listings and getting the most of customity. Also, the app can be integrated to any e-commerce platform, including WooCommerce, BigCommerce, Magento, Walmart, and Shopify. And in this case, for Shopify, I have my own store, some known, um, known to some of you. And I created another product using Customity. In this particular product, you see, you can pick from different graphics. And whenever you pick a specific symbol, for example, this, you will get the sign of the zodiac and also the name of the zodiac sign. This is very interesting because it allows you to simplify the process to just one choice for your customers. They want to just see their, their, um, their zodiac sign and they want to be able to just click it and have the 
text change as well. And you can do this with Customity. We're going to do this today. Of course, when we start off with Customity, I always encourage you to ask yourself some questions. What am I going to be setting? Do I have my own designs or will I be using Customity design? If I have my designs, what sort of assets do I need? Do I need the photo of the product? Do I need the background, the different fonts and color codes, for example? And how am I going to be fulfilling? Will I be using a print on demand provider? Do I have my own workshop? Also, do I have an existing store with existing products that I wish to link Customity to improve them? Those questions are important because you can take different roles using Customity. And it's very important that you take the first, the right role from the beginning. So if we jump in here, we're going to start from the beginning. Let's say that I am a store owner. I want to start selling personalized products and I just install Customity to try it out. I'm going to land on the main menu of Customity and I will be received by an onboarding that I highly recommend that you follow. It will, that onboarding will ask you the same questions that I just mentioned you. What are you selling? How are you fulfilling? Do you have designs? And with those questions, the onboarding is going to customize and, and personalize your role and show you the different sections you can explore to save you time. Still, Customily is always available from the first day of your free trial with all the tools and all the designs. So you're free to explore and see the full potential. So here we are at the main menu of the app. You can see at the left bar that we have some sections. These first three sections are shortcuts to the 2.0 tools. We are in the start menu here. And the first thing you will see is to create a new product. You also have a quick shortcut to these two collections, the My Designs collection and the My Product Base collection. As we saw this before, My Designs are those designs you create. You can create your designs in our uh, design studio and then connect them to any product that can be from a print-on-demand product, or it can be your own product that you will create in the My Product Basis section. The second, uh, the second group of, uh, of areas, or basically the next three sections of Customity are the main core of the app. In here, you can manage, create, and rename, do um, <clears throat> exploring around your templates. The templates, remember, are the key files of Customity, are the ones that load on the front end here. They provide the live preview. So whenever you create a new product or whenever you go straight to the template section and create a template from scratch, Every single template that is created with a new product or by hand will go to this section and you can always explore and manage them and see um, and even edit them at any point. Also, you can organize and upload your assets in libraries. We have color libraries, fonts, vectors, and image libraries. These libraries will save you a lot of time when you are repeating a certain schematic of colors or certain fonts, when you have a lot of um, clip art that you want to replicate on many different designs or products, you can save time by creating libraries and reuse them constantly. In the store section, you can see all your connected products as well as those not connected, you can manage those connections. And you can also manage many settings that will help you customize the front end experience of your customers. In the orders section, you will start to see those orders that are created using Customity on the front end of your store. Whenever someone customizes and purchases a product, of course, on your specific platform, you will get the order information, but also you'll be able to review and keep track in the order section. So today we're going to create the products I show you at the beginning. If you check this white uh, 15 ounce ceramic mug, this was created uh, on a print on demand provider. In this particular case, Gelato. And we're going to do that. We're going to pick 
a product from a print-on-demand provider. We're going to pick a design from the customity collection, and we're going to, um, to create a brand new product. Now, one thing you should know is, uh, specifically for mugs, sometimes designs uh, are meant for a frontal view, and mugs are a wraparound type of print. So, for example, if I were to pick this design from our collection, which I'm, I'm going to do that, this is a central design, so it's going to be placed on the center. Basically, you'll be able to see uh, uh, to print this cat design um, on the face opposing the handle, which is not very nice to look at on the preview. And you're kind of wasting a lot of time, a, a lot of space on the printing part. But that's the great thing about Customity. You can modify whatever you create um, on a first instance. That's a great way to get started, but you can always modify that to serve your particular needs. So we're going to do that. Also, this subject necklace product is actually a plug base. Let's say I have this necklace on my stock and I intend to engrave the different subject signs. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to create a product base and then I'm going to create a design and combine them into a new product. What can happen later because I have a product base is that I can put another design and another design and another design. So if I later want to create another um, necklace that is instead of zodiac is monogram or initials, all I have to do is keep my product base and create multiple designs. So once I'm here and I want to start off with something, a product in my store to, to my brand new store. And what I do have is print on demand accounts. So whenever I go and create a new product, I see my available print on demand providers that are currently integrated with Customity. Those print on demands that have automatic fulfillment indicated below are those that support API. So if you have an account with any of them or all of them, you can go and retrieve the API key of that account and put it in Customity for a full integration that will enable you the automatic fulfillment. For each product that you create using these providers and is published in your store, each purchase will go straight for them for fulfillment. To connect the API key, what you need to do is go to the settings area on the top here of the screen, find the Integrations tab. And here you will see all your available integrations or none if you're just beginning. But you can select the print on demand provider you have right now in this drop down menu. For example, I uh, don't oh know, Gearment could be one case. Uh, or we can set uh, Gelato, which is the one we're going to use today. You click on Enable Integration, and that will add Gelato here to the, to the list. In this case, I already have an API key, but if I were to add a new one, let's go for this sample here. All you need to do is find the API key in your Cerato account. In this case, if you don't know where to find it, we have a help center article that will guide you very nice and easy into the different print on demand providers until you find Let's say Printify Shine On Gelato. So by following these instructions, you'll be able to retrieve your API key. You can paste it here, and it will uh, validate the key, and you come and save the settings. Once you save the settings, you are now fully integrated with that particular print on demand. So your products created and sold will automatically fulfill. You can still create products, but they will not automatically fulfill. So now we are ready to create a new product. So I click here. I select Gelato in this case, and I will see the print on demand catalog. I can browse for the different pages, find and check my products, see that all products have integrated print areas, which is very specific to each print on demand and to each product. And let's just go to the search bar and find the mug 
Um, and I have several options for mugs. I'm going for the white ounce ceramic mug. So I'm going to click this product to select that. This will bring me the basic information of the product from Gelato. I see that uh, if I have multiple variants, I can pick them. The same if we have multiple print areas. In this case, we have only one color and one default print area which wraps around. So I'm going to click Next. And after I select the product that I want to, to publish, I'm going to pick the design that will go into that product. As you can see, you can pick from your designs once you start creating designs. And you can pick from our collection. And when you click here, you get to see over 200 designs that are all uh, theme-related, character-related, special locations, uh, seasonal events. There's a lot of categories and a lot of designs that you can explore and something that will get you started on the go. In this case, because I'm going to be creating a mug, I can actually search for the word mug and find those designs in our collection that will fit perfectly into a wraparound print area. You see, these designs have been um, have been put together to have two different graphics, one on each side of the mug. So when it prints, it goes around and looks really nice. It's a great um, hint when you're designing your own mugs to pay attention to that. And if you name your product mug, your design mug is going to filter really fast when you are using uh, those products from print-on-demand providers. Let me go to the second one, and I'm going to pick this one. Now, this one has a specific, you see, the preview is different because we made this uh, special for today that is, uh, there's a center image and not two images to wrap around. So whenever I click on any design in this particular design, I get to pick my store. As you can see, you can have multiple Shopify stores in one single account, as well as an Etsy store all connected to Customity. So whenever you follow the 2.0 tools, you are uh, at the last moment you can pick in which store you want to publish, to create and publish this new product. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick my Etsy store and then click OK. And Customity begins to work. What's going to happen now is that Customity will create a new listing on your Etsy store, my Etsy store, is going to connect that listing to Shellato, so they have an API connection. Also, it's going to bring the information of the mockup and the print area, and it's going to put the design we selected into that print area and into that preview. And when you have both things together, you have a template. We're going to see how the template looks on the inside, but basically, it's a two-piece uh, file. The first piece is the print part, and the second piece is the preview part. Now, whenever this is finished, this is a less than two minutes process, you get to see a final revision of how it's going to look. Doesn't seem to be pretty, uh, pretty nice because like I said, if you have a central design on a long horizontal print area, you will get this final preview. It's correct. Your design is printing on the opposite face of the handle. No worries, we can change this, but we want this product created in our store because this has the API connection, has the template, has the options, has everything we need. We just want to do some adjustments to the final template for printing. In the final revision, we're going to do a couple of things. Um, we're going to change this uh, we're going to grab this image because we want to have something on on our uh, our listing photo. So I'm going to click visualize. Oh wait, let me just pick one cut. Yeah, and at least put four fluffy and have a cut. Then I'm going to click visualize, and I will see this. What I'm going to do with this is I'm going to click and can save image as. Uh, this is going to be the mug listing. And the reason why I have this is because I want to also edit the product details. It's very important because I highly recommend you change the name. This is a very generic name that you want to change to basically find that product later in your store. So I'm going to click this. I'm going to change the 
price to okay well something more realistic like i don't know could be something like this and we're going to call this the uh full live session by default there's no image on your listing but you can change this main product image and use the listing we just grabbed like i said it's not perfect but you can change that later on your etsy back end there's no other variants and we are ready to go. This will be my new listing information. I'm going to save this and I'm ready to publish. And the moment I publish, I get to open the listing and I also get to open the personalization page. Remember, you can, you need to, um, the way Etsy is set up, you can customize after the purchase. But it's a very automated process so you don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to click on publish. Oh, you see, uh, I was playing around showing you uh, how to put the API key of Gelato, but I didn't put it, okay? I didn't save it. So the system will always warn me that I am publishing a product from a POD. I don't have the API. So if you want to fulfill automatically, you need to later go and add the API key. You will get these warnings to help you get the most of the app all the time. I'm going to say not now, just for this. This is my new listing. Of course, I, I can go and um, start customizing this, um, make sure this has a nice description. Uh, we actually have a live session dedicated to Etsy publishing in which we give a lot of tips on um, how to set up your listing. So you can actually add media like videos and you can have um, a video of yourself customizing this, tell customers that they will receive an email, and we by default add this image that explains the process. So at least you always have something to begin with. You purchase, you personalize with the email that you will get that is like this, and you get it after you submit. So what happened on the back end? If we go to the start section, we can see here at the top that says products. I can open this section, which is basically the same as the store section. Okay, don't, it's basically that. And I can pick my store. In this case, I'm going to pick from the drop down here Etsy. And um, we call this the um, Dubosa mug. So let's go with the mug. Uh, white 15 ceramic mug. Okay, uh, didn't sync the name yet, but it's going to. You can click here and it's going to sync. If not, sometimes Etsy doesn't sync that fast as Shopify, but still, the name is working perfectly well. This is the uh, full live session mug. Here you go. So, I'm going to open this product in, in, the, in the store section just to see what's going on inside. This is the listing photo. This is the name. I can click here and this I to open the listing and also open the, the personalization page. And at the same time, I get to see which template is loading. I can remove it and change it if I want to. And I also can see which option set is being loaded. Again, I can remove it and change it. It's all working. Uh, it's all customizable. Uh, I'm going to click here just so you can see the well the listing. We have that open already. Let's click that. And this is the customization page. This is what you get when you purchase this product. We're not going to play around with the options because we want to change some things. What do we want to change? The print, basically. So I'm going to open the template here. I can click on the shortcut, open a new tab. On the big list of templates we have, this will be filtered so you can now find it, rename it if you want, or click edit to see what's inside. To begin with, remember your the customity design is actually a square, so it's all this, all these elements, and the print area of the mug is actually a, um, a long rectangle. So I need to rearrange this so I can print here on one side of the mug and here on the other side of the mug. So I'm going to grab everything, okay? And I can just 
skip the arrows on my keyboard and just move this to the side. Yeah, simple as that. So now I'm printing on one side. And if I open, for example, one cat design, basically I have the cat name that I can type something. I have the cat read, which is this image. And you see there's a library connected, so I can pick between 100 cats. So I have one cat, uh, number 10, the number 11, the number 100. I can preview any cat that I want. And also there's uh, something called the jingle bell, which is this cap that we show whenever we pick this cat. And the title will also show picking this. This title will also replicate on two cats and three cats. The only difference is we have first and second cat. And in this case, we have first, second, and third cat. You see, whenever I pick these different layouts or the different designs available, I, I see one, two, or the other different element. So that's how the design has been structured. And I'm going to do something extra. I'm going to create a text box. And we're going to go through the different options in the next product. But I'm going to create a text box because I basically want to add my name to this. So I will have the name of my pet on one side. And on the other side of the mug, I will have my name. So I create a text box, basically. And let me just go to chat actor here to change my font. Find, uh, is this is the same font as this one, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, friendly schoolmates. So they match on the fonts. And now I can type my name for that if I want for customization. Remember, everything in the template is just a matter of previewing and testing. And you see, I took a customity design and I just moved a couple of things, added a text and whatever, and now I'm ready to go. This is a new text element, has a specific ID called 26, and I'm going to remember this for later. Now I'm going to click Next to jump from the first step, which is the production file settings, the print file settings, to the second step, which is the preview. Now, the same information that you have on the print, you arrange that in your preview. The preview has some extra elements. For example, you have a base image of your, um, of your product. And you have, for example, if you want a mask, in this case, the mask is really handy because very really useful because you see it's a transparent PNG that shapes whatever design you put. And what I'm going to do is I'll unlock this for a second. And I'm going to pick my entire design, which is the free layouts plus the heart. And I'm going to do what I did on the print. I'm going to move this all the way to the other side so I can print that. Yeah. And probably this one will be a bit centered. You're still going to print exactly what you need, but you're showing this better on the preview. So once we have this set up, we click Next to do the final revision and save. Final revision is really interesting. Uh, you can see all things together. That's one thing, but just because it's a revision. But you get to see the concept behind the template. You can grab the last text we created, the 26, put something here, like. And you see that whatever I type will show on the preview and will also replicate on the print file. That's how Customily can create a print file from whatever your customer does on the front end, all through the template. So let's save it. And it's the same template we're using already here. We just changed a couple of things. Finish that, we are going to jump back to create more templates, just that. And what I can do is just come to my preview link and refresh so I can see the changes. I will not see, of course, changes on the, on the listing photo, but on the preview here, you see how now the design shows on one side. If I pick three cuts, I'll be able to pick one, two, three cuts, okay. Still, this is printing, but has a wrapping around. And I'm missing something. I'm missing the part of my name because I have modified a template, but I have not updated the options. So I'm just quickly going to back to my product page here. Remember when we saw the template connected and the options connected. If I click here on the name, I'll be able to open the options. 
And I really don't have to go very deep into understanding what is all this. We have actually a lot of specific live sessions for you to check how can you edit this. But I do want to show you something. On the preview options here, if I open this, I see, well, number of cuts, I can choose the option. And whatever I pick, it will trigger a lot of different uh, breeds and settings. And all you see here is actually options that you can pick. Um, for example, cat name is the first one. Then we have the cat breed. When you pick this, you have four different options. Then you have the second name and so on, so on. But one thing I can do here is add a new option. And so I can come all the way down and add a new option manually. It will jump all the way to the last page. And this will be a text input. You see, now we have a text input all the way down. And we can call this your name. And your name will, you'll be able to type in whatever you want. But if you want this to showcase here, where you know there's an object, there's a text element waiting for information, you need to target that. And you target that by going to the functions part. I went to other function, which is text. Remember that the ID was 26. We saw that before. Basically, what I'm telling customly is whenever I type something here on your name, you will put that information that I type on this object that is on my template. That's all you need to do to add, to apply what you created new into your um, into your your new preview. I save the option set and I refresh this to show the example. Now you have your name and you can start off with this. So now we have the field and because we also have the function, we can type in this and see that change live like the others. Now we're going to pick the cat. I'm going to call this Fluffy again and pick whatever cat I want. And if we like this image, you can visualize this, save this again, and change your listing photo really fast on Etsy. OK, so the other product we wanted to create together was this Zodiac necklace. Because this is a product base, this is something that I have already, I need to put together some information first. Uh, I need this. Um, I need this necklace, of course, but I don't need the necklace with an example. I actually need the necklace completely empty. Like, well, um, you need all these symbols, okay? That's one thing. But you need this. You need a photo of your necklace without any customization. Why? Because this is your background. This is your preview part. And you're going to put your design in here. Let me keep this because I'm going to use this later. So I need the, uh, the, the image of my product without any customization. I also need to know the size of the print area. That's very important because it's going to be um, uh, essential to putting together my product base. I know, for example, that my print area is three by three centimeters, for example. And that information is something you need to know. Then. Think about the design. What do you want to offer? I want to offer text. I want to offer um, symbol selection. Perfect. But very important, not only that, I actually want my symbols to be the only choice. And the text will show up automatically. And that's something you can do with Gustomity really easy. And we're going to do that now. So how do we start? We start with our product bases. Why? Because we have the necklace. And we want to offer a lot of designs. So we need to have an empty necklace to begin with. So I'm going to create a product base. I'm going to call this the uh, live session necklace. Uh, let's call this the gold necklace or the star necklace. Let's have a star. It's going to start having a lot of necklaces. And like I said, you need to know the size of the print area. The, printable part of your necklace. In this case, three by three centimeters is my available space. So I'm going to create this new product base. And it will have a print area of three by three centimeters. 
print area means that whenever I pick a design, it's going to be placed inside this, this maximum print area. Very important. We need to know how am I going to be fulfilling this. If I'm going to be doing uh, exporting in, um, for example, DXF format, could be one thing. Could be CMYK. I don't know. This could be one way because it's going to be engraved. So some machines need this format, but you can have EPS, Illustrator, image files, PDF for vector in colors. I'm going to stay with this. And I'm going to click Next because the print part is already here. That's all I need. I need just one print area for the for the necklace. And then on the next step, just like you saw on the template before, you have print and you have preview. And here I'm going to put together my preview, my preview setting. I have some tools. In this case, the mask is this tool we use for those PNGs with transparencies, like the one of the mug. And the product base is basically what we need. The product image is what we need. In this case, we need our necklace base. If it's too big, custom ID will optimize like that. Now that we have our mockup here, we need to set the print area to showcase on the desired location like this. So I'm, whatever design I print is going to showcase in this part of my mockup image. The rest is basically mockup. So this is my print area. This is my mockup. And I'm ready to jump to the next and final part, which is basically the revision, like a template. You see you print in three by three, but you showcase on top of this background like that. Whatever design I want. I'm going to create a subject design, but tomorrow I may create an initials design or a monogram design. I'm free to do whatever I want, but I have my base product. So the, ba the product is always the same. I just change the content. And each time I create a new design, I create a new listing so I can sell necklaces with zodiacs, necklaces with uh, names. I can use them for different occasions, target different uh, markets, etc. So let's save it. We don't have any variants because this is a product or, or a product base. So if you have variants, you can add them here. In this case, we don't have variants. A good variant would be, for example, uh, different material, silver, gold, rose gold. So you can always set up multiple sizes, multiple materials, multiple colors. I have my product ready. And now I need to go to my design and create my subject design. So I'm going to my, my design collection. I'm going to create a new design. Let's call this the live session subject design. And this is our design studio. Here you can see all the tools we have available for you to create whatever you come up with. Um, Basically, sometimes you have a background or you have an idea and you want to customize on top of that. So you can probably start off with your own clip arts, your own images. In that case, you start by having those elements uploaded to Customity by using dynamic elements. Dynamic images or vectors will allow you to um, upload images. In fact, you can upload one image. OK, in the first position, you upload one image. If you upload only one image, that's basically a um, it's a background. It's a, it's a fixed image there. But if you upload a bulk bunch of images, for example, if I click Upload and I pick all my subject signs, not that one, OK, I can click Open, and it will load everything on one single object, meaning that now I have 12 choices inside this object. And that's all Customity needs to know to create this set of um, swatches. Basically, knowing that you have more than one element here, two or more, that's enough for Customity to determine there's a choice in here. So I'm going to call this the, uh, I'm going to double click on the layer and set select your so yeah, sign. Yeah, so that will replicate on the label here that says image selection one. It's not very nice. This will look better. 
So I can resize this whenever I want. Uh, if I want this to be more specific, because maybe I have this already set up on another software and I want to replicate that, I can go specifically to my coordinates and width and height section. Another tools we have to customize whatever we want is uh, star maps and street maps. We have some live sessions on this, which are really amazing, and we create a lot of um, interesting designs. And we have placeholders, images, and vector placeholder. What is a placeholder? You see, if I click here to, to add this object, I will see that the dynamic image has the upload image button, but the placeholder has a try with an image. Why? Because this is an object meant for your customers to upload their own files, their own images, their own logos, whatever. This is a space for them to customize with their own information. So it's very common that we see products and designs that involve um, image upload, uh, photo collage and stuff. Those are placeholders. To separate this from this, remember that Dynamic images have four small icons, meaning that you can put together as many images as you want inside here, or like eight. We show that, yeah. And image base holder has only one icon, which because this is just your uh, uploaded image, your customers uploaded image. Then the last tools we have are text boxes. These text boxes are basically spaces for your customers to upload to input their own text you can have fixed text also so like we saw in the example the idea is to have a fixed text and not something your customers can type or you can have them if you want okay i'm going to resize this put it somewhere around here and grab these two together go to the alignments align them together then select the workspace center this and center this like that. And see, this, um, this text element will allow them to type whatever they want. And you can open the character section to add fonts the same way you add images. You add multiple fonts, and you go font number one, font number two, three, and four. You can select as many as you want. In this case, I'm going for a font that I have this called Edwardian script because it's more into the idea. And I need this to be bigger because it's really small. So my maximum size will change to, I don't know, 400. Yeah, that looks better. Uh, but I'm not going to let my customers um, type anything. So I'm going to just stay with 400 here. So uh, can go a bit smaller, but not as small. I'm going to force some content into this text field. Yeah, this, which is the name of the different um, zodiac signs. Basically, this is my design. I don't need much more. I need to know that we matching this content to this, but that's something later that I want to do with the options. But when I save a setting, automatically, I start a save a design, automatically, customity will create the options. The options are the swatches, this, um, fields for you to fill in uh, these drop downs whatever you have set up in your template or your design will replicate in the options and you can customize them in the way you want which i'm going to do now so you can see that once you invest on your design and you invest on your options for the design later all you have to do is combine the product base and the design to create a brand new product with a brand new template if I look, go for my last page. Uh, there you go. Live session subject. And I'm going to edit the options here. I can keep editing the template again. Sorry, the design. Clone it, delete. And I can click on edit options and I will see the options that I have available. I have two options basically. I have all these swatches. Yeah. And I have this text. But the thing is, I don't want my customers to type anything here. I want this to be automated. I want this to be a really fast uh, and, and attractive uh, purchase experience. They need to pick the sign, and that's it. So uh, I'm not going to delete this option. I'm just going to put it 
here as hidden. So it doesn't show. And very interesting, if I were to begin, that's why I kind of needed this uh, reference. This is the first one is Aquarius. So what I can do is I can change this to Aquarius and put it as initial value. So now what's going to happen is that whenever I pick, uh, whenever I load this product, the initial value Aquarius will show up and it will always show. But it doesn't matter what I pick from these different symbols, it will always say Aquarius. Unless I scroll down and I go to the conditions and I tell this particular text field with Aquarius as the default value to show, well, I'm going to add a condition that says show when the first, when the zodiac sign is Aquarius. So with this small instruction, this specific text input with this specific value will only show when I see, when I click on Aquarius. And it's very crazy. So I'm going to open the Zodiac swatch, find the first one, which is the Aquarius. And I'm going to change this to this because it's uh, the tooltip needs to be exactly what our customers want, right? So it's going to hover and it's going to say Aquarius and that's perfect. Next, I'm going to do this really fast, sorry. Or maybe jump in. How do we save time on this construction of 11 different signs? By cloning. There's a clone option here, and I can clone this, change this to um, Aries. So I'm going to call this Aries. Then I'm going to, uh, I'm just calling this so I know where to find that. I'm going to put the initial value like this. I'm going to the conditions and I'm going to add this and not this to be my new condition. And probably going to change this here as well. Then uh, let's go with the next one, which is cancer. I'm going to do free and you can do the rest. Next one, which is this, is this one is cancer. So I need to actually find the last one, clone it, and change it like that. And uh, everything stays the same. I just need to change these conditions like that. Yeah, so I can keep going. I already made it over here. I still have a long way to go, but I'm going to save it. If you do it once, it will stay good in this uh, in the options for any design. But now that I have a design, I can go to the start and you see my design is here, my product base is here, and I can combine them exactly the same way as I did the mug with the custom design. I will create a new product. Instead of a POD, I'm going to pick my product bases, look for the uh, necklace here, live session star necklace. No variants, no regular print area, just click next. And then I'm going to pick not from custom designs, but from my design. Probably on the last page, I will find my live session zodiac. And I'm just going to pick here, and that's all we need. You see, I didn't ask me about my store because I only have one store here. I have a, a Shopify store. So it's automatically creating the new listing and it's creating the new template based on my print area information and my mockup information. So I will see my live session Zodiac design in a free by free print area and on the mockup I created. Just as simple as that. So I want to pick, for example, Aquarius. You see the tooltips are showing, not the rest, but because we didn't finish. But if I click Cancer, it's going to show that and the right symbol. Aries will do the same. And Aquarius will do the same. The rest is just a matter of repeating the process but they look nice. So all I need to see is 
my tooltip popping up. And whenever I pick this, the right symbol shows and the text fills in. Why? Because we are calling for a specific text field with a specific initial value, but we can't see that. It's a great trick to changing content without uh, having the chance of your customers um, messing with that specific content. Yeah. So homework is to finish all this. It's going to look really nice. Uh, I'm going to stay with cancer, OK? And I'm going to save this to be my new um, listing photo. And I'm ready to, pre to publish this. So now I click publish and I go straight to my front end. I can go to my Shopify back end, change the name, change the price, change the quantity, set up whatever I want. But you see, I have the same swatches. Everything that I saw on the final revision is here. This is my new listing photo, but I can click this, this, and this to see how it changes. OK, before I, um, before I just summarize, I want to congratulate all of you because you have earned tickets. By assisting to this live session, you have earned your tickets for the September challenge. So congratulations. I hope you keep accumulating more and more tickets for this uh, special event. Well, I really hope you have things clear now on how to create these products, how to use customity, how to follow the right path in your particular store, your particular products. And remember, any questions, we have an excellent support team. You can contact them over email at support at customity.com. You can open a live chat in the app. Our live chat is um, open on Office Hours EST. And also join our Facebook communities because there's a lot of people helping, sharing, commenting, and um, giving out experience and ideas. So it's a great way to get in contact with people working with Customity as well. OK, well, that's all for today. Thank you for joining us. We're going to be resuming this on Thursday with more uh, fall-related designs and great product ideas. So hope to see you there. Have a great day. Bye-bye.